Welcome to Nevada, one of the 50 states of the U.S., and the unfortunate one to have the distinction of having the highest level of unemployment, weighing in at 14%. You'll be seeing video and slides of Las Vegas, the largest city in Nevada, and a world-renowned gambling member. Nevada has a population of 2.6 million people, and there are roughly 187,000 hotel rooms in the entire state. Nevada also has the highest percentage of illegal immigrants in the country, coming in at 8.8%. Furthermore, they also, strangely, have the highest rates of auto insurance in the entire country. Now, not all of that is due to legal immigration, but possibly to drunk driving as well. I've been to Vegas many times, and one thing I can tell you about it is that it keeps getting bigger and better, even Reno. It's interesting seeing this summer's parallel between San Diego and Las Vegas. Whereas San Diego has let its visitor sections of the town fall into total disrepair, Las Vegas has taken the opposite route and gone all out in order to roll out the red carpet. The amount of amenities in Las Vegas, which was far from insignificant in years past, is now vast and breathtaking. The attention to detail now being paid by the hotels in terms of art, customer service, and upkeep has re-energized the city. I've strolled and staggered through many of these hotels in years past, and today can barely recognize them. The managers of these hotels didn't just wake up one morning and decide to go for broke in order to draw the crowds. The casinos in Vegas keep very tidy books, so it's been fairly obvious to all involved that gambling revenue has been declining along with room occupancy, as consumers have had less disposable income. I think because Vegas has been acting in a cooperative manner for some time that it wasn't hard for the strip hotels to get together and say to themselves, what do we need to do to up our game, to draw the people? Time out, time out. Coyote ugly. Don't go there. You'll look in through those little doors. You'll see beautiful women dancing on the bar. You'll think, this looks cool. It's inside New York, New York, by the way. Then you'll pay 10 15 or $20 cover to get in. And only then will you find out that the cheapest drink is $10.00 and the only women in the entire bar are the ones dancing on the stage. But yes, so anyways, the hotels in Vegas, they got together, and they outdid each other. They have raised the bar for the entire country, as far as hospitality goes. Now, all of the innovations have not, in my opinion, been a net gain for our culture. In the last two years, topless pools have become much more prevalent in Vegas. And I love topless pools just as much as the next guy. In fact, I'm probably loving them a lot more than the next guy. But in my view, this will lead to a race to the bottom along the strip, further objectifying women even more than already done so today, and finally shattering that invisible barrier that kept the prostitutes at least out of plain sight along the strip. The Sapphire Pool at Hotel Rio has already been closed down due to the extreme amount of prostitutes and drug dealers at the pool. One of the things Vegas has to do is keep itself classy so that women who are not prostitutes or strippers still want to go there. And did you check out that trash can? I had to take a picture of that because it was just awesome. This is the city center project. For a time, people were not sure if it would be completed because of the bad comp, but Vegas doesn't stop for any. Here's some pictures outside of the Miracle Mile shop. It really looks nice out, doesn't it? But it wasn't in front. It was 100 degrees plus down there, or you surprised it was 105 out. But the great thing right now during the summertime is that you can pick up a hotel room along the strip for a song. We're talking $20 will get you a hotel room. And really, that's all you need is a place to sleep at night. If you're worried about what to do during the day, you can shop and go to the pool. And then at night, that's when the real party starts. Don't eat here. The cheeseburger place, it's in the Miracle Mile. It's next to this 15-foot tall statue of a stripper. They will lure you inside, tell you it'll just take a minute for your food, and then 45 minutes later, they hand you some overpriced garbage. Yeah, don't eat there. And here, once again, the Miracle Mile is a section. Now, most of the, uh, the mile of shop is uh, pretty nice. They have reasonable prices. But this place right here, take a listen to it. It's loud. It was so loud, you can't hear the person next to you talk. I don't know, someone must have messed with the PA that day or something, but if it's like that every day, they're insane. 
the Arch de Triomphe at Paris, Paris, the Eiffel Tower, as close as some Americans will ever get to seeing a little taste of France. Really, if you have your choice of where to go this summer, make it Vegas. Oh, look, look, it's one of the call girl guys. He's handing out call girl cards. When you're walking along the strip in Vegas, these guys, they stand out there. They're legal immigrants. They don't speak any English, but they flash this uh, stuff at you, these pamphlets. And they're just, uh, they are cards of different call girls that you can have at your room in 15 minutes or less. And there's a prostitute right there. Booyah. She was actually very attractive. She had on a bikini under that. I could tell she's a prostitute because she was wandering by herself aimlessly from hotel to hotel. Sometimes when you're with your friends, it's a fun game to play called Count the Prostitutes. I mean, you have to look, but you can find them. They're there. The shopping is exquisite. I happened to stop in at this one cell phone store in the wind. The cheapest cell phone they had was $5,000, and it wasn't even a smartphone. I think I'm going to go on the internet later and get myself a knockoff, because I love being pretentious. It is so much fun. Just let loose when you're in Vegas. Have a good time. That's the allure. There's the guy selling water. There are legal immigrants everywhere, and they are doing all sorts of work, legal and illegal work. It's amazing. Caesar's Palace is what you're about to see in the next segment of slides. Definitely check it out. They have some beautiful art all over the place. That's the high roller section, and that's the prostitute, as you might imagine. If you go into a high roller section, expect to be accosted by a prostitute as soon as you walk out. And I must say, I have a problem with $20 slots. I'm not a wealthy man, but there's just something about $20 slots that I cannot resist. One of the interesting things about Caesar's Palace is their new shopping forum. It's called The Forum, brand new, and it is a work of art in and of itself. They have iconic pillars in there. They have giant statues of Greco-Roman art. It is amazing. Here's some footage. And the best part of it all, they have curving escalators. Until this moment, I had never written a curving escalator in my entire life. I won't tell you anything further about it because I want you to enjoy it yourself. It is amazing. I could show you hours and hours of footage of Las Vegas. One day on the strip is not going to cut it. One weekend on the strip is not going to cut it. If you're going to go down to Vegas, you need to spend an entire week time. And don't just stay at one hotel. Stay a few days at one hotel and then go down to another on the other end of the strip. So you can really get a feel for it. Because you're going to be doing a lot of work. So make sure you bring a good pair of shoes. And also you'll want to have formal clothes because some restaurants and bars will not allow you in unless you are properly tired. And look, there's a prostitute, there's another one. Ah, uh, it makes two so far. No, wait, three. Another facet of Las Vegas is the high-end shopping. You will see Gucci and Prada all day wherever you go. $50,000 watches, $9,000 Prada suits, $5,000 cell phones. But there is so much shopping. Now, in years past, the high-end stores were really suffering, and even today, they're not doing as well as they could. But still, they're surviving, and it's necessary for the other stores in these different facilities to have them. It's a draw. Go, Winneville. If you stop in at Treasure Island, I insist that you go there and you have a drink, no matter your age or your gender or anything else. Because once you have a drink in Gohuneville, afterwards, good things generally happen. I don't know, maybe I'm a small child at heart, but I love Treasure Island. And check out the show that they have about 7 p.m. It's really something to see, and it's free. It's a nice uh, excursion. The Wynn. There are so many fancy restaurants, hallways, and stores in the Wynn. It's amazing. You can get lost in there. In fact, I did. And security. I want to mention the security system in Las Vegas. You will be safe no matter where you are, day or night. It's very safe in Vegas. One note, though, if you are a woman, after about 11.30, it won't be as safe for you to walk around by yourself. This isn't because of crime, but simply because there will be roving bands of drunk men walking around looking for women. So make sure you walk with at least one other person after 11.30 at night. I don't know where you're going to go on your vacation, but I suggest that you make it Vegas, because there's no better place in the entire United States right now. Not even Hawaii. Rich level.